again to another edition in our lecture wrap-up series uh, for Engineering 17 Section 2 here at UC Davis in spring quarter 2014. So this is a wrap-up video from Lecture 3. So today we talked about resistive uh, circuits again, one of the details around how we can simplify ser uh, resistors in series as well as resistors in parallel. Then we got into talking about the voltage divider rule, current divider rule, and how we can apply those to kind of get us more direct access to defining a given voltage or current in a specific branch of a, of a circuit without having to go through the typical Kirchhoff voltage or current laws as we did previously. And we generalized that to, you know, started by looking at simply two resistors, either in series or parallel, but then had, we also had generalized expressions for uh, coming up with each of those, uh, the voltage divider or current dividers. And then finally, we touched on the uh, last section of chapter three in your book, which is these delta to y circuit transformations that allow us to uh, transform a given circuit um, topologically if we need to in order to be able to simplify the circuit overall. So I want to go through just a quick example here again to just sort of really hammer home this point of, of how we can use the current divider as I'll use in this case uh, as a benefit to sort of simplifying our lives a little bit as we want to um, be able to come up with equivalent circuits and such. So here I have a, uh, a network of resistors uh, in circuit with a 10 volt supply, uh, voltage supply here. So the first thing that we'll need to do in order to, to get anywhere with this is to be able to define uh, what the current is that's traveling uh, out of, the total current that's traveling out from this source here. So I'm gonna say that's IS, okay? So in order to determine that, as we know, we need to be able to simplify this uh, portion, all these resistances down into a single resistance such that we'll be able to come up with an equivalent resistance, REQ here, so our 10 volt supply. And so in order to do that, as we'll see, okay, so first we start on this end, we have uh, two resistors in series right here, the four and the two ohms. So of course these would combine into the uh, 6 ohm resistance here, then we have the 6 ohm in parallel with our 3 ohm resistor here. So sort of the equivalent for just these two branches going together, of course, is going to be the 6 times 3 over 6 plus 3. So that should give us the 18 over 9. So uh, 2 ohms just for this branch right here. Then we have this 2 ohms in series with the 3 ohm resistance here, which means our equivalent resistance for the whole thing is going to be five ohms, right? So again, as we know, just in using Ohm's law, I know the voltage across this resistor and I know the resistance itself. So our IS value as defined here is simply going to be V over R. So 10 volts over five ohms gives the two amps output here. So this is equal to two amps. So now that we have the total, uh, we've solved the circuit for looking at what the total current is. Now let's say I want to know what the current is specifically through this branch here. So I'll call this one I3. So through the three ohm branch here. So again, we have the two amps coming through here. Now that two amps is going to split off based on the resistances of each of the given branches here. Now we can use that current divider rule in order to just directly allow us to calculate based on the proportion of the resistances what I3 will be here. So again, that will be set up as I3 is going to be equal to these combined resistances, the six ohms, over the sum of these and this one here, six plus three. And then that'll be all multiplied times our two amps. So we have six over nine times two Okay, so we'll get out uh, with four thirds of an amp here from, uh, from that. So that's telling us for four thirds of an amp traveling through this branch here, the remainder of the current from this two amps is obviously then going to flow around the other side of the uh, circuit on that end as well. So here again, we've used this expression as what we've been able to come up with today using the current divider rule. Uh, similarly, if we're wanting to know like a particular voltage across a resistor, as such, we could then use the uh, voltage divider rule to allow us to do that as well. So then the final topic, which I'll just illustrate again in regards to these circuit transformations, 
was in the case where we might have had uh, a delta configuration of resistors that would look something like this. Okay, so I would maybe define these nodes A, B, and C. Resistors R sub A, R sub B, R sub C. So maybe in the, in the case of the Wheatstone Bridge circuit that we looked at in class, uh, we had one of these in there and we, we weren't able to simplify anything without transforming this into something more workable. So we transformed this into the Y configuration, which allowed us to come up with something like this. Again, nodes A, B, C, and then resistances R1, R2, and R3, such that just keep, always keep in mind, these resistances from the delta configuration are not equal to the resistances from the Y configuration. So there, we have to transform uh, R, R, A, R, B, and R, C into R1, R2, and R3. And so we went through in class the equations that we would use to enable us to do that. And it basically all boiled down to coming up with what is the resistance, uh, equivalent resistance between two nodes in the delta circuit and you want to equate that to what is the resistance, the equivalent resistance um, between A, B, and the Y uh, configuration. We would do that between each of the two nodes, and you could ultimately solve for understanding how you would convert from R, A, R, B, R, C down to R1, R2, R3. So that's about what we covered today in class. Hope to see you all on Thursday. Stay classy. Yeah.